let's see what the Nissan lady has to say. Only vehicle in the park here was a relatively old mid mid 80s. That's exactly what Knowlton said. He said an 84 or so. Honda, possibly an Accord. The FBI wrote this up in the type version as either tan or dark. Okay, that means well it was tan or it could have been some totally different color that was dark. If you go to the handwritten notes, they changed it. The handwritten notes say tannish slash dark. Brown car, not Foster's. Next one. Time marches on. We're now about 5.30. Oh, it's cute. In a footnote, Star says, according to the reports of their interviews, Nissan man, Nissan woman did not see anyone in or touching Mr. Foster's car. That's true, because Mr. Foster's car wasn't there. A true but utterly misleading statement. Next one. Okay, this is the confidential witness. He found the body about 545. Here's what he told the FBI he saw in the lot. A light tan or light brown Japanese vehicle could have been a Nissan Toyota or possibly a Honda. Got the same brown car. This is the guy. The body's lying dead up there in the park. When he's in there, he doesn't talk about any gray car. Next one. This should be getting pretty obvious to all hands right now. This is C6. She is a real babe. She is married to a husband named Bob. And I call her the Mercedes lady because her Mercedes broke down, down on the parkway. And she saw the Fort Marcy Park driveway. I thought, geez, maybe, you know, National Park, maybe there's a phone in there I can call and get my car towed. She wandered up into the parking lot. This is it. She says 545 to 615. There's other evidence to indicate that it was a probably exactly 6 o'clock. She only saw the near side of the parking lot. She said at least two cars in the parking lot parked fairly close to one another, not necessarily side by side, so on and so on. The second was a light gray or silver. She is the first one on the record to say gray or silver Honda, maybe Vince's. Trouble is that she gave interviews to two separate reporters after that, and she unhesitatingly, as Ambrose Evans Pritchard reports in his book and Jamie Detmer reported in Insight when I sent him to her, that the car she saw was down here. Uh, she said, uh, quite sure her car was tannish brown. Uh, you know, in other words, I think the Bureau changed this. I'd like to go to the handwritten FBI interview notes, but we want our FOIA suits, but they didn't give them to us for her. Wonder why. Next one. So we're now at 6 o'clock and Foster's car ain't there yet. Okay, the 9-11 call goes out, Park Police and the Fairfax County EMS personnel charge off to the park. The chief of the paramedics, as he's driving into the park, reports what he sees in the lot. Brown Honda Arkansas tags. He also saw the, the Nissan that belonged to C3 and C4. Paramedic, he's not saying gray, he's saying brown. Let's go to the next one. So if you discount the fact of the Mercedes lady and that the probably she told the reporters what she remembered and the bureau changed it. Here's the first park police report. There's the gray brown. They're slipping it in. Next one. Uh, this is the park police report. Parked in the fourth spot, gray Honda. Now we're talking gray Honda. This is after the investigators get there about 6.45 p.m. Now the question is, the gray Honda apparently got there at some point and the brown Honda apparently left. That's what I'm telling you. It had to happen if my little theory is correct. Let's go to the next one. Okay, this is a paramedic, one of the first bunch in the park. Upon arriving at Fort Marcy Park, Hall noticed an unoccupied brown car with the engine running parked in the lot. He noted the car was not parked in a space. This is the brown car that was parked in the space. They backed it out. The engine was running. They were going to flip it right out of the park. And up come the driveway. Comes the park police cruiser and the big pumper truck and the, uh, the ambulance. And the guy went, whoa, and bailed. And so when they got to the lot, they found the brown car, the same car Knowlton saw, the same car all these other people saw, except this time it had been moved back into the middle of the lot, the engine was running, and it was going to patch out, but he was just a little too slow. Next one. Oh, by the way, Star doesn't tell you any of this. I mean, one of the things I hope Star would do would walk you through all this and explain how, you know, I'm all screwed up. He could even use an, uh, a pseudonym for me, like C7 or something. Okay. This is the guy's FBI interview. Upon arriving at Fort Marcy Park, noticed an unoccupied brown car with the engine running parked in the lot, not parked in a space. Next one. This is his Senate deposition under oath. 
Do you remember seeing an unoccupied car with the engine running in the parking lot? Yes. This is cute. Yes, it was speculation between all of us that it was the car in the lot running. What the hell does that mean? What he's telling us is that everybody was speculating that the car in the lot with the engine running, the it there, the reference is it was the car of the dead guy. Why did they think that? They knew the dead guy worked in the White House. The brown car had Arkansas plates. That's the it. That's my analysis. Now look what the questioner does. And look how he confuses Hall. Hall's on a roll here, the paramedic. I'll read it again. Do you remember seeing an unoccupied car with the engine running in the parking lot? Yes, it was speculation between all of us that it was, in the, it was, it was the car in the lot running. And then he says, that it was running? And, and he goes, well, I did hear it running. He's changing the subject here. What he's doing is he's, he said, well, you guys were standing around the lot, and there's this car with the engine running, and you guys were speculating about whether the engine was running or not, right? I mean, you're sitting there going, putt, 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 putt. And you're, oh, yeah, well, I don't know. It looks like it's running to me, Bob. I don't know, Bill. I don't know. I hear it. Uh, he's, he's taking him away from where he doesn't want him to go. Uh, he goes on to say, do you remember someone saying, I guess it was, victim must have been one of Clinton's buddies from Arkansas. See, the brown car was in there. The brown car had its engine running. It was ready to patch out. It had Arkansas license plates. And all the paramedics said, we think this is a dead guy's car. And it wasn't the dead guy's car. The dead guy's car wasn't in a lot yet. Next one. Okay, this is a lady for you ladies in the audience. Uh, ladies are good witnesses too, just like men sometime. And here's what she says. Independent observer, upon entering Fort Marcy Park, watch out, recall seeing one car in the parking lot with its hazard lights on. She remembers that the engine was running, noting the car was unoccupied. Then she says there was also a second vehicle bearing Arkansas license plates that was parked closest to the park entrance. I don't know about that, but what does this mean? A second vehicle bearing Arkansas license plates? Does that mean a second vehicle, comma, bearing Arkansas license plates? But that's literally not what it says. I don't know really what to make of this piece of it. Maybe it means there was two, she saw two cars in the lot both with Arkansas plates. I don't really know on that, and that's pushing it. The main thing I want to leave you with is she saw this car. She's talking about the hazard lights were on, parked not in the space, engine is running. To me, she's referring to the same car Hall was, the brown car about to patch out. Next one. <sighs> okay, we're going to have a, this is a little potpourri time here. This is Dr. Lee of OJ fame. Star said, go find me some evidence, Mr. Lee. And Lee delivered. This is amazing stuff. Lee stated blood stains were found on both sides of the lenses of Mr. Foster's eyeglasses. These blood stains were less than or equal to a millimeter in size. Now what he's saying is that Mr. Foster's glasses, when he looked at them, there were blood drops on both sides of the lenses. Now this is potentially important because the glasses were not found on Mr. Foster's face. They were found 19 feet uprange of his face. I could see how you, know, you shoot yourself in the mouth, maybe your head snaps back, and the glasses end up downrange. But they didn't. They ended up 19 feet uprange. And it was a little embarrassing. You know, everybody at this report, they're all saying, well, geez, you know, we, we, we don't want these. It, it turns out where they were falling was right at the turn of the slope on the other side of the hill, and then the upturn for the slope his body was found on. If you were bringing the body into the park, that's the change in slope from downhill to uphill. If they were in his shirt pocket or loosely on his face, that's a logical place for them to fall off. By the way, the only picture of them in the record is in the lab, and it shows that the stem's broken. Like maybe, this is real speculation here, maybe they fell off right when the slope changed. Maybe somebody carrying the body stepped on them, didn't notice it. But this report said, oh, we don't want these glasses anywhere other than his face when he was shot because, you know. So the FBI looked at the glasses real hard. Magnifying glass, microscope, checked it out. They found one grain of ball-shaped smokeless powder, one grain, on the glasses. Okay, I'll take them at their word. Uh, the, the cartridge that was used was firing ball-shaped smokeless powder. So they said, oh, the glasses must have been on or near the face. Okay, now what I want you to understand here is the FBI looked at those glasses so close they found one grain of gunpowder on them. While they were doing that, they missed the blood drops on both sides of the lenses. Uh, duh. But Mr. Lee, Dr. Lee, found them. Okay, stranger than fiction. Next one. 
Okay, this is this is Pat Knowlton came up with this one, bless his heart. I, to, I stole it from him. Dr. Lee reported no dragging type soil patterns or damage which could have resulted from dragging type action were observed on these pants, meaning Foster's pants. Star also indicates that Lee said the same thing about Foster's shirt. He was lying on his back. And the reason that Lee says this is because, you know, if his body was transported to the park, maybe somebody dragged it. I mean, if you've ever... You know, you could one one strong guy could carry Vince in a fireman's carry. A couple of guys could carry him fore and aft. You wouldn't drag him. But they're concerned about this moving the body stuff. So Lee looks at the pants, looks at the shirt, microscopically, like he found the blood drops, and he says, "Well, I checked it out. And there's no sign the body was dragged. So therefore, all these morons and kooks that are running around talking about the body being taken into the park, well, at least I can tell you it wasn't dragged." <laughs> This is a terrible, terrible thing for Mr. Lee to say, and he didn't even know when he said it. It was a terrible, terrible thing for Starr to say, and he didn't know. And here's why it's so terrible. The body was dragged twice. The government dragged it. Next one. They're just being too cute. Uh, we're at the, death, at the body site. And the photos have been taken, and they're going to roll over the body. Now, he's on a 45-degree slope. His, his feet are 13 feet from the bottom of the slope. The head is near the top of the slope. And they're rolling the body. And here's what the investigator said what happened when he and the, the medical examiner rolled the body.